Hi, this is pre-algebra lesson 5-8, analyzing equivalent expressions. In this lesson, we'll be able to use an equivalent expression to find new information. Let's look at solving this classic. How many toothpicks make a triangle? Two triangles? Write an expression that represents the number of two picks, uh, of toothpicks needed to make X triangles that appear side by side in a single row as shown Explain your reasoning. What do you notice about the number of toothpicks needed for more than one triangle? So one triangle would need three sides. So three toothpicks, right? What about the next one right adjacent to it? You just need two more. You just need to add two more. And then the next one, add two more, add two more, and so on. So in order to make um, the triangles, you just need two more toothpicks once you have the first one, right? Can you make that um, in a table? Okay, let's make that into a table. Um, you can identify the relationship between triangles, the number of triangles X and the number of toothpicks. There. Okay, so the first triangle, you need three toothpicks. Then total, um, you just need to add two more toothpicks. In order to get two tri make two triangles, you need five toothpicks. Three, seven, four, nine, five, 11, and so on, right? The more triangle you wanna make, uh, double, the more uh, toothpicks you need. And can you write this as an expression? So number of toothpicks total would be Y. If this is Y and that's X, What's the relationship between y and x? You have to start with three, right? And then you're gonna add two every time you add a triangle. But how can you make the first one three and then add two? You can start with the first triangle with one extra toothpick because um, for every triangle, you need two toothpicks. And for the first one, you need one extra one, right? But every triangle needs two toothpicks. So the number of triangle, the first one is gonna be two times one plus one. So you need three toothpicks, yeah? So think about what, what the pattern is. And if you, have, if you have started with something extra, that's what you're starting from. You're not starting from three because your pattern is that you're gonna multiply two times the number of triangles. So every time you multiply two by the number of triangles, uh, you need to see what an extra toothpick you have for the number of toothpicks. And that you'll always have that extra one that you started with, okay? The first triangle, second triangle, third triangle, fifth, uh, fourth, fifth, and so on could be represented as y equals two x plus one. Okay, focus on math practices. Can there be more than one expression that represents the total number of toothpicks needed to make x triangles in the arrangement shown? Explain. Could there be another expression to represent this instead of two x plus one? Can you think of any other equivalent expressions? Sure, you can have any kinds of equivalent expressions if they're equivalent, right? What kind of equivalent expression can you come up with that equals to 2x plus 1? You can maybe 
factor them out or you can add something else. Um, but make sure it's an equivalent expression. 2x plus 1 should be equivalent to um, maybe 3x minus x plus 1. Does that work? Yeah, 3x minus 1 is 2x, right? So you can expand it like that because this is already simplified. Or you could factor the 2 out and say x plus 1 over 2. Be careful not to keep the one as it is, because if you factor out two from one, that means you're dividing one by two. So if you multiply out later using distributed property, two times x is two x, two times one half is one. So they're equivalent, okay? So these are some examples of equivalent expressions, but let's, let's write, um, our words down. Okay. Let's look at example one in the next page. How can writing equivalent expressions show how quantities are related? Do you like pasta? Do you know bana pasta? Um, these pastas go uh, with the bread. They usually come inside the bread or with on the bread um, when you order it from the restaurant. A new box of pasta claims that it contains 25% more than the usual box. What expression shows the amount of pasta P in the new box? What expressions can you write to represent a percent greater than the original amount? So if the original amount was 100%, if you have 25% more, that means you add 25%. So you have 125%, right? So you can draw a bar diagram to represent um, the problem situation as an expression. So the original amount could be 100%, which could also be represented as decimal one, right? The whole number one. And 25% would be in decimal 0 0.25, okay? So if you multiply that constant with your variable that represents the amount of pasta you have, um, you can write it as an expression using coefficients, 1p plus 0.25p should be 1.25p. And that means you have 125% of the original amount. So try number one, Joe is buying gift cards that are on sale for 15% off. He uses C minus 0.15C to determine the sale price of gift cards. What is an equivalent expression that Joe could also use to describe, um, determine the sale price of a gift card? Okay, so C is the whole thing and you subtract 0.15C, so that must be 0.15C, right? So this amount is C minus this part or what is, um, what is an equivalent expression for that? One minus 0 0.15 would be 0 0.85. So what is your equivalent expression? 0 0.85C. Okay, convince me. How do you know if an expression is describing a percent increase or percent decrease? How do you know? How do you know looking at the coefficients? Can you tell the difference? 1.25 versus 0 0.85. 1.25 means they have 25% more. The 0 0.85, that's 85% of the whole, which means it's not whole. So it's less than the whole, right? So if it's greater than 100%, it's increasing. If it's less than 100%, it's decreasing. So in decimal, the coefficient, if the coefficient is less than one, it's decreasing. 
and if it's greater than one, it's increasing. Okay, let's look at example two. Analyze equivalent expressions. Some middle school students will use one foot tiles to create a frame around a large square mural painting with side lengths S feet. Three students each wrote an expression to determine the number of tiles needed. Are these expressions equivalent to explain? So we see some uh, expressions that may or may not be equivalent. So let's see if we can simplify and see if they could be equivalent expressions. Four times S plus one. Okay, so she thinks this part is S plus one. So if you multiply that by four, it should cover um, the tiles around, right? So using the distributed property, that should be four S plus four. What about this one? S plus S plus S plus S plus one, two, three, four. And that's equivalent to four S plus four as well. So they're equivalent. But two S, two S over here, plus two times S plus two, would that cover it? Well, if you solve for a s a two s plus two s plus four um, is four s plus four, so they're all equivalent expressions. They are um, written in different ways, but they're all equivalent expressions. Okay, so it depends on which part you are getting out of. The three expressions are equivalent because they represent the number of tiles in your frame around the painting. They represent the same thing. What about example three? Interpret equivalent expressions here. The table with a rectangular top has been extended with a table leaf as shown. Multiply 3.5 times 6.5 plus x to write an equivalent expression for the total area of the extended table. What does each term of the equivalent expression tell you about the table? Okay, so if you look at the diagram, we have the blue rectangle having 6.5 as a length and 3.5 as a width, and the leaf uh, would be x feet wide um, and 3.5 feet long. So you can use an, uh, an expression 6.5 plus x to represent the whole length over here and the width could be 3.5, right? So that would be the total area. Um, can you multiply that out and write an equivalent expression with a simplified expression? You can distribute, the pro uh, distribute, the, distribute this out and multiply 3.5 times 6.5 is 22.75. 3.5 times x is just 3.5x. And that is your equivalent expression. So let's look at try question. The total area in square feet of a rectangular stage that has been widened by x feet is represented by 1,900 plus 76x. Use the distributed property to factor the expression. What does each factor in the equivalent expression tell you about the stage, okay? So the total area is given, 1,900 plus 76x. But how can you factor this out? You wanna find first GCF of the terms. Okay, what, what is GCF of 1900, uh, 1976? 76, 1900, if you divide it by 76, you get 25. So factor the greatest common factor out using distributive property. So this one becomes 76. You take the fact, greatest common factor out. 
1900 divided by 76 was again 25. And 76 divided by itself is one. So that's gonna be one X. So 76 times 25 plus X, that tells you this would probably be 25 and that would be 76. Let's write that down. Okay. So 76 represents the length and width and feet of the stage. 25 plus X represents the extended width of the stage. Without the extension, the stage is 25, 25 feet wide. Okay, that was the last lesson of this topic. Rewriting expressions can clarify relationships among quantities or variables. That was lesson eight, analyzing equivalent expressions. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next topic. Bye.